Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 17th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have an interesting observation by our handler, Jim. Jim has a website that's accessible via IPv6 and he looked at some of the brute force attempts that he has seen against WordPress. Now, the interesting part here is not that he sees a lot of attempts, certainly you see this on pretty much all websites, but that most of these attempts actually come in via IPv6. Now, one thing a lot of people don't understand about IPv6 is that while IPv6 hasn't really penetrated corporate networks much, home users, and in particular mobile users, usually actually do have IPv6 internet access. A lot of ISPs have rolled out IPv6 to home users over the last couple of years and pretty much all mobile networks have done so. And that's of course where a lot of these scans originate from and that sort of explains Jim's observation of seeing a lot of attacks coming in via IPv6. So if you are exposing servers via IPv6, you better make sure that you also monitor IPv6 access. And of course, particularly if you do so via proxies, this can be sometimes tricky because then the web server itself doesn't actually see the IPv6 address, but may see an IPv4 address of the proxy. And Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update or short CPU. In this particular update, they are again fixing a large number of vulnerabilities, 237, which is sort of average, maybe a little bit on the high side for Oracle, but remember it's across a large number of different applications. Of course, I had to look uh, what's going on with WebLogic because we had uh, so many issues with that recently with these crypto miners. And there's one vulnerability that looks sort of interesting, CVE 2017, 10,352. It has a CVSS base score of 10. Now, when you read it first, it doesn't really sound that bad. Essentially, a denial of service vulnerability can cause hang or frequent repeated crash of Oracle WebLogic. But then sort of at the end of the sentence they put in here, it also can cause an unauthorized update insert or delete access to some of Oracle WebLogic server's accessible data. So this could certainly be escalated here, maybe even to an arbitrary code execution, not really clear based on this description. There are also a number of Oracle components uh, for which Log4j is updated. Now, uh, this framework uh, is an open source framework and the vulnerability being updated here, patched here, is actually one that was released uh, mid last year and a proof of concept is available and it can lead to arbitrary code execution. Sort of interesting here that this vulnerability in some cases only affects specific language versions of Oracle product. For example, the PeopleSoft Enterprise Fin supply chain portal, only the Brazil and Argentinian version, I guess, is affected by this log for J issue. But uh, read the complete update if you're running any of this, uh, really not easy to sort of make sense of it, in particular without access to all the details uh, that are available about these particular products. And Kaspersky's SecureList site has a fairly detailed and technical write-up about a recent Android spyware that they observed. They're calling it SkyGo Free and uh, they say it's actually has been in some versions around since 2014, but the version they're describing now, they saw in the beginning of 2017. One thing that's sort of noteworthy here is that they really include a lot of the messenger programs in their spyware effort. So Facebook messengers, WhatsApp and the like uh, are being exfiltrated. This particular piece of software also allows for a variety of different remote control channels via HTTP, XMPP, essentially instant messaging, also push messages via Google or binary SMS messages can be used in order to send commands to the phone. So pretty nasty piece of software. 
Many of the exploits are derived from what leaked back in the hacking team leak. And according to Kaspersky, they saw this particular piece of software being advertised on essentially phishing sites. So sites that mimic mobile operators and then try to trick users into downloading this malicious code. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.